design, and then I can put it on the table, put it on the floor. I can take one of these markers and put it up against a flange and make the part, right? And look at how far I can compare it to a previous design, right? In the real world. So as you can see, right, we can kind of look at this from afar. We can zoom in, right? Look at some of the details. And uh, we can kind of, you can see that the model happens to be attached to the hamper, okay? But the thing is, it's not locked to the paper, okay? I can, I can move it around like I was, but I, by moving the device, moving the paper, or you know, I can use gestures, so I can do a turntable rotation. Humble it. I can grab it with the iPad. So wherever I need the iPad, it moves the model in space. Okay. One of the things that we've done is if I grab the model and I bring it down, you'll see that it respects the floor. Okay? It won't violate the floor. It's casting a shadow. And the first time we implemented this, we didn't do that. We just took a, a 3D model and we kind of put it on top of the video and it looked totally disconnected from what was going on. But now that we cast a shadow, excuse me, we cast a shadow, we respect, respect the floor. <laughs> now we've taken that design, we've actually brought it into our world. Okay, and we can interact with it as such. So we can do things like, um, oh, since we know about the floor, we can also slide it around. I can slide it over to the window. Um, we can also do things like, again, we're, we're developing this not because it's cool technology, but we want to make it useful to engineers and designers, right? So things like we might want to annotate the design. Again, we can see it in the real world. We can tell how big or small it's going to be. So let's go ahead and, and create an annotation. 